Good morning and welcome, and I invite you to be seated. I welcome each and every one of you to the service today, those who are visiting with us, those who are with us on, on Zoom right now and who will watch the service later on YouTube. A warm welcome to each one. Uh, there's a number of announcements in the bulletin today. I'm going to highlight a couple of them, but because I, I tend to get forgetful, I'm going to do the celebrations first. And so we wish a happy birthday to Tom Lowe, Peter Mill Pete Millard, and Lauren Smith, and a happy anniversary to Peter and Margie Mulvihill. And may God bless you all on your special day in the coming week. Uh, I'm going to right now, you'll notice there's a lovely little blue poster that if I had my reading glasses, I could actually read. So instead of doing that, I'm going to ask Deanna to come forward, who's very involved with the whole Earth Th Sings project, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about that. Hi, can you all hear me? Okay, so this, I just want to talk a little bit about this, the whole Earth Sings. And it was created by a lady named Linda Jo Nuis. And she started just when we kind of came out of COVID a bit, she wanted to get people together to sing, but COVID hit again. So when COVID, went away this time uh, she got a big group of people so we have about 45 people from nine years old to I don't know people in their 60s and 70s and I'm a stage man I'm the stage manager for this production our first show was here on Friday night and last night we had to close the show because we've already had 95 people <laughs> register. Um, so there are other performances. On Saturday, there's two performances, one at the Prescott Amphitheater at 2 p.m. and one uh, Saturday night at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Prescott. And then our final show is here on uh, Sunday afternoon at two o'clock. And thank you to Father Mike for letting us use this beautiful environment when we were as a production team talking about where will we go I said oh let's ask for my church because it has the best acoustics and and he was uh, on board with it a hundred percent I hope you can come because the joy on these people's faces as they're singing is overwhelming and you'll know some of the songs like here comes the sun and lean on me um, there's a couple other but kids have little solos in it and they do some little dancing so it's really joyous and a time to come together and I'm pretty proud of it and excited so that's it that's my blurb oh and it's free will offering Yeah, su Sunday, uh, June 19th. Okay? Um, just a couple other things I want to highlight. Just, uh, I encourage you to take home the bulletin and read through the announcements section. Uh, the other two things I want to highlight, first of all, is Meals on Wheels. Uh, we're looking for more people to get involved in that. We're down a number of people in our organization to take meals out to individuals in the community for one reason or another can't provide for themselves. It's a wonderful ministry to be a part of. I've been doing it for several years and uh, Rob Castle and I are a team. We head out on Friday mornings once a month and go around and the appreciation of the folks that you deliver to and the it's just so heartfelt to be able to participate in that. And uh, we need some extra people to be involved. And so Dorothy's here today. Wave, Dorothy. There's Dorothy. Is the parish coordinator for that. So if you're able to, to join on and help out, whether it be on an ongoing basis or occasionally or temporary, then please talk to her. 
uh, because it's a really important bit of work and a program in this community and uh, we, we need to keep it going. So please talk to her about that. The, the second one, there's nothing in the bulletin about this, is um, uh, Agape Brockville. Agape is our, our um, refugee re response team, if you'd like. And Agape Brockville came together a number of years ago with our church, St. Paul's um, and, and St. Francis. Uh, and since then, we've added Leeds Anglican Ministries. And together, we form Agape Brockville to support refugees coming into our area and sponsoring them uh, to come in as well. We've had uh, a number of families already, wonderful success stories and uh, um, heartwarming stories uh, in their lives and how we've seen them grow, develop, and some move on into other places. But there are other families coming, and uh, they're coming. Uh, <laughs> they're coming, we just don't know when. And uh, the process of getting over here is quite complicated. Uh, we know we have a, a family coming before long, but that might be October. And uh, in the meantime, people are generously donating to us furniture and other things that we will need to have to furnish uh, places for them to live. The question is, what do we do with that in the meantime? And we are looking for somebody, if you know someone or you yourself have a, a big garage that doesn't have much in it or some space that we could use to store items until they're needed. It would be greatly appreciated. And uh, the alternative is paying for a locker, which is quite expensive and, and prevents us from using that money to do other things that are, are more helpful. So if you have room, you talk to Mr. Agape himself, John Groves. And uh, if you know of anybody, it's, you don't even have to put up your hand. We know who John Groves is. My goodness, St. John from Algonquin. And uh, so I do talk to John. If you have any ideas around that, uh, we have one particular offer. It's almost a full household that's been donated. And uh, so the, the pressure is on to deal with it, even though the pressure isn't on to, to use it yet. So talk to John after the service or call him. And if there's somebody that has some space, let us know. Other announcements? Well, I'm going to invite you to turn to page 185, and I invite you, as you're able, to stand for our opening greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
And turning to your reading sheet, I invite you to join with me in the colic prayer for today. Holy and undivided Trinity, you're in the un in harmony of gift and response through the uncreated word and the spirit of truth. Embrace us and all creation in your extravagant love through the wisdom of God who raises her voice to call us to life. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Listen as wisdom calls out. Hear as understanding raises her voice. On the hilltop along the road, she takes her stand at the crossroads. By the gates at the entrance to the town, on the road leading in, she cries aloud. I call to you, to all of you. I raise my voice to all people. The Lord formed me from the beginning, before he created anything else. I was appointed in ages past, at the very first, before the earth began. I was born before the oceans were created before the springs bubbled forth their waters, before the mountains were formed, before the hills I was born, before he had made the earth and fields and the first handfuls of soil. I was there when he established the heavens, when he drew the horizon on the oceans. I was there when he set the clouds above, when he established the springs deep in the earth. I was there when he set the limits of the seas so they would not spread beyond their boundaries. And when he marked off the earth's foundations, I was the architect at his side. I was his constant delight rejoicing always in his presence, and how happy I was with the world he created, how I rejoiced with the human family. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God.
a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Hear what the Spirit is saying. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ.
Lord, uphold me that I might uplift thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we've had a very rich and wonderful few weeks of celebration. First, the, the 50 days of the Easter season capped off with our wonderful celebration of Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit that was not just given then, but has been continually pouring out upon the believers and on the church and, and inspiring and empowering us all to do ministry from that point till now. And today we, we finish the kind of the big festivals of this time of the year with Trinity Sunday. And, and our, our ears should still be ringing with holy, holy, holy. Uh, it's our, kind of our Anglican anthem, but, but also it's the, it's the go-to hymn of Trinity Sunday, Lord God Almighty. It's a wonderful, wonderful hymn. My ears are also ringing with uh, St. Patrick's breastplate. I bind unto myself this day the strong name of the Trinity. And so many of our hymns inspire us to reflect on, sing about, and, and glorify the Trinity of God the Father, the God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And if I was a wise man, I would end my homily now. Because, well, I'm sure you're all thinking, yeah, that'd be really good. But uh, nonetheless, because you, you approach days like Trinity Sunday. Now, some Sundays, it's a story that we hear so often that, that you, everybody knows what it's about, and they've heard it so often, it's sometimes hard to, to grab a hold of something new. With Trinity Sunday, it's a day where the theme itself is, is mystery. You know, we talk about the mystery of the Holy Trinity, and the church in its wisdom has attempted to explain the Trinity since its very beginning, its very roots, and we're still working on it. So how do you speak about and talk about something that can't be explained and is indeed a mystery of God's love? Well, you move to another place. You do something different. You don't try to explain. You try to find the gift that is in it. And the Trinity is nothing but gift to us. I think... I can't remember, did I preach on Trinity Sunday last, was it last year that I did the Rublev uh, icon? Ha, I knew you wouldn't remember. Um, so, but I talked about the Rublev icon, and uh, it's sitting up over here, and it's been out a fair bit over the season of Lent this year, and it's a picture of the, of the Trinity as people sitting around a table, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together, and the table has an open side towards us, and, and the idea is that that's the invitation. We are the ones who are to take our place at the table and engage with the Trinity that is such a gift of love. And that's a great icon, and it's a great image, and indeed we are invited all the time to engage with the God of love who sent his Son and the Holy Spirit into the world for us. But God doesn't wait for us to accept the invitation. God breaks into our lives all the time and is present in and with and for us all the time. The first breaking in that happened at the beginning of time, God the Creator, God the Father, the Creator, the one who made everything, made us and the, the millions and millions of stars, and as the Bible tells us, he knows them all by name. And that God who created the world and, and he wanted somebody to love and to share it with, and so he makes us. He makes humanity. And one way or the other, that gets all messed up by, by our pride and our sinfulness, and, and, and the relationship gets, gets broken. But God doesn't give up because of that. God tries harder. And again and again and again through the stories of the Bible, God sent holy people uh, into the lives of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Israelites to call them back into connection, to call them back into relationship. The prophets and, and one after the other who were the spokespeople for God trying to instruct them back into the way that was a godly way, back into the relationship with the Creator. Well, eventually God decides that he would again come to us in this world in the form of his son 
and, and to connect to us directly, to engage us through the love and the ministry and the mission of Jesus Christ, which was about good news and a new kingdom for us to be a part of. And Jesus comes into our earthly form to identify with us and connect to us in a very special way, to understand the challenges of human uh, living, the ups and downs, the joys and sorrows, the successes and failures. He expressed, he experienced it all, even up to his own agonizing death. Jesus became us to show us God's love. And through his death and resurrection, express that love sacrificially, unconditionally, and completely. And God, again, connecting to us in our lives, reaching out to us to connect. When we pick up the gospel for today, it is the point in John's gospel where Jesus is starting to prepare his disciples for when he's going to be gone. That he's going to have to leave them. And, and uh, it's part of the farewell discourses that, that are a long list of Jesus' final teaching, trying to, to get as much information into those disciples as he could before he, he would die. And uh, it's interesting, I read somebody said, yeah, they were cramming for their finals. Um, I'm not quite sure that's exactly right. But another person took, looked at it differently. He said, it, it was, it's a bit like when you leave your children with a new babysitter. And as parents, you probably tell them 150 times more than they need to know, but you want them to know it to make you feel better. And so you give them this long list of things and what to do and what do they like and what will they eat and all, and to make sure that the children will be fine and looked after and safe and well. And, and I thought that's a really neat image, isn't it? Because Jesus is saying just that. He's telling them that the Holy Spirit was going to come and it would continue to guide, direct, and encourage the disciples to do just that, to be the, the keepers of humanity, that the church and the disciples that came after it, they are charged with looking after the children of God. And Jesus wants to make sure that the babysitters, that rough bunch of fishermen, uh, apostles, understood what they were supposed to do for him. And before he left, he had to make sure that the children would be fine. And so he pours out this long discourse, but ultimately says, you know, I can see that this is getting too much for you. You don't have to worry, because I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will continue to give you what you need to know. The Holy Spirit will continue to guide you and empower you and encourage you as you continue that ministry of love that I have called you to. You don't have to worry. The Spirit is with you. So all the parts of the Trinity are all about God breaking into our lives, not us breaking into God's life. And God, from the very beginning, has been a God who continues to reach out to us, to, uh, to impact us in our lives, to break into our lives in wonderful and profound ways, and in particular in his Son, Jesus Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit that we uh, celebrated last week. So you don't have to explain the Holy Trinity. You just have to accept it as gift. It's gift. It's God's way of connecting to us every way possible to watch over us, his children, as he cares for us and as we care for one another. Amen. If you turn in your bulletin, you'll find the, uh, the creed for today. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we reaffirm our faith. And together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. 
We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to be seated or to kneel for the prayers of the people. Today we pray for the Anglican Church in the Anglican community, the cycle of prayer. We pray in the Anglican Church of South America, the Anglican Lutheran cycle of prayer. We pray for the Most Reverend Gregory Kerr Wilson, Metropolitan, and the clergy and people of the Ecclesiastical Province of Rupert Land in the Lutheran Church we pray for the Lutheran and Anglican global partners and companions. In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. We also pray for the parish of All Saints South Grenville, the Reverend Canon Dr. Barbara Robinson, interim priest in charge. In our community, we pray for our congregations of St. John's and St. Lawrence, and for our shared ministry. In our community, we pray for the Salvation Army <coughs> Citadel, Major <coughs> Stephen McNelly. We also pray for the friends at St. Paul's, Canon Lynn Dillaba and Reverend Ted Guthrie, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and Pastor Moses Prashad, and Christ United Church in Lynn. In our parish, Today in our parish like prayer cycle, we pray for Mary Byers McNabb, Amy Bryan Phillips, Ron and Gail Gerd, and Sarah Kalilia. We pray for our clergy, Michael and George, our staff and wardens. Peace. We pray for peace in all countries of our world and for the continuing healing we pray for our troops serving in many parts of our world and members of our regiment, the Brockville Rifles, particularly for those who are presently deployed. We pray for all people living in areas of conflict and for all refugees fleeing for safer countries. And most especially, we pray for those fleeing from the Ukraine. We pray for our planet and that we might all be faithful stewards of the earth. The litany for today is in your bulletin. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the, the almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, <clears throat> whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found, we pray that the world created by your love for its nations and governments, extend to them your peace, pardoning, love, mercy, and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord, we pray for the church created for your glory, for its ministry, to reflect those works of yours. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy, and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for the families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick, and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy 
and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice holy, Father, Spirit, Son, mysterious Godhead, three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you. Bring us to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of, God power, of and might, power and might, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And as you are able, would you please stand? Peace to you from God our Father, peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace, peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver, the peace of the triune God be always with you. Please share the peace with those around you. Our offertory hymn for today is 381, Praise My Soul. Turning in the bulletin, please join me in the prayer over the gifts. Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, 
we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Service continues on page 198 with Eucharistic prayer number three. I invite you to stand, sit, or kneel, whichever you're most accustomed to do. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise, because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, 
a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us sing. Breaking of the bread, number one. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. My brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
namely the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Amen. the end of the body of Christ given for you. Sandy, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless you. Time in the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Nick, the body of our Lord Jesus given for you. Alan, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Love, the bread of heaven given for you. Sandy, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greg, the bread of heaven given for you. Jan, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Maureen, the body of Christ given for you. Jeff, the body of our Lord Jesus, the bread of heaven. Elaine, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. John, the body of our Lord Jesus, given for you.
As you are able, would you please stand for the concluding prayers? We begin with the prayer after communion found in the back page of your bulletin. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and love. Defend us on every side and guide us in truth, in peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be upon you and remain with you and those you love from this time forth and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 326, Break the Vision That Delighted. My friends, our worship is ended, our service now begins. Let us go forth in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.